Gemini friends, I'm Annie Botticelli, and welcome to my Gemini May 2023 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. I'm calling the theme of this month, The Land of Secrets, and I will fill you in on why I am saying that. This is for you if Gemini is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other Gemini placement you're watching for. This is part of your astrological picture. And if you're a very late degree Gemini friend, birthdays around June 15th through the rest of the sign or placements around 23 degrees or so through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my cancer report since both the Gemini and cancer reports will have relevance for you very late degree friends. Okay, so let's just get right into my theme. And then of course, there are other things to talk about as well in a very complex month, including a full moon lunar eclipse on May 5th and Scorpio. So there's lots to discuss, but we'll start from the beginning. In the time before your birthday, happy birthday, by the way, to our May born Geminis. So in the time before your birthday, whether your birthday is in May or June, doesn't matter. This is what the chart starts to look like. Okay, now if you are listening to the podcast version and you want to see the visuals, go to Annie Botticelli on YouTube and look for Gemini May 2023 and you can get the visuals. If you're someone that doesn't want the visuals and you just want the podcast, then search for Astro Kisses with Annie Botticelli and listen to the podcast version. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight planets moving through Taurus. Jupiter is about to be there making its sign change to Taurus, which will be there then for a year. So that's nine. May 19th, new moon, 25 degrees of Taurus. So like 10 placements are in the 12th house, which is the house of secrets for Gemini. Okay, this is the, or it's the house of secrets for everybody, but 10 of those placements are in your 12th house. And this is a very big deal. This is the energy of things done behind closed doors things happening in your mind, in your imagination, a nest that you're keeping, that you're protecting, that you're building, that you're growing away from where everybody can see. Maybe just a few chosen people, or maybe it's just within yourself. So this is an area of riches in your chart and a time when secrets can come out that you have Secrets that you've been wondering about if something's been withheld from you can come out. Or you may find hidden portals to secret worlds. This is the house of all that is and our connection to the all that is. The secret lands of imagination, of creation, of pre-creation, of future creation. All of this is embodied in this 12th house and you can see, or now I've explained to you if you can't see on here, how full this is. So for all of these placements, Jupiter, star goddess Estrella, transiting north node, star goddess Vesta, the sun, Mercury, Uranus, Sedna, star goddess Juno. This is all bringing lines of energy to your secret world, your hidden world, the lesser seen world, your spiritual side and your imagination. So now we couple this with Mars, which has been accentuating and bringing a lot of focus to your financial world, which we'll get back to that topic here in a minute. But Mars will move into Leo and accentuate your communication land, okay? So writing is so well indicated at this time. Many Geminis are writers, speakers, creators of some, some form or fashion. And you may find that you become very obsessed over the next few months with writing and creating and taking those secret realms and making them manifest. You might also find that this Mars energy manifests in different ways through the transportation and line. So you're busy, you're traveling around, you're visiting relatives. Um, This house is the house of relatives other than your children or parents. So there are a lot of people that could be involved there. So you may find that that vigorous Mars energy is causing you to travel or have people visit you and you're running around with them and also just a lot of driving around and general busyness. Now, before it gets to Leo and accentuates this, it spends the first part of the month still in Cancer, which again is on your your second house. Now, what's interesting about this with the rest of the profile we talked about is all those other planets I mentioned that are in Taurus, Taurus rules the second house. 
So between Mars bringing its border collie obsessive focus, as I like to call it, and Gemini about to, or um, Cancer about to leave your sign of Gemini and go into Cancer, which will then be in the second house. All of this is a combination of massive earth energy and material creation. So this is really a time where things that you've been thinking of, things that you've been trying to do, things you've been hoping for may manifest very, very physically, very, very obviously. And if we didn't have all of that going on, is that, I mean, if that's not enough, Saturn has changed signs and is now accentuating your 10th house. Saturn is the taskmaster, the ruler of the material realm. When I say material, yes, it's money for sure. Yes, it's stuff for sure, but it's also our presence in form. You know, it's our 3D human experience and, you know, the things that go along with that, the hard work, the discipline, the responsibility. And as Saturn is moving through Pisces from 2023 through 2026, it's going to be bringing opportunities to bring that Piscean realm, which again, the Pisces realm is the house that all of those Taurus energies are accentuating for you. So you can see all of these multiple layers in the chart of the story of ethereal things becoming manifest, ethereal connections becoming obvious, channeling information, channeling and healing, channeling healing, any combination of all of this, and then doing all of that for your work. All right, your 10th house where Saturn is moving is very much about your income, your employment, but it's not only that. It could also be passion projects for which you don't have to earn money. Either you're, you know, younger and you don't, you know, you're not in a situation where you have to deal with money yet, or you are for some other reason financially independent, or you're retired. This can have to do with manifesting your dreams and something out into the world right? So the, the power of manifestation, the splendor of creation is in full effect right now. And it's very, very exciting. Let's talk a little bit about what happens in the weeks before you have your birthday. Or if you're watching for a Gemini um, placement that isn't the sun, if it's another Gemini placement, this is still going to be true for you. So what happens is the sun at least, and you can see in this case, many other things, crowd your 12th house. The 12th house, besides the things we've mentioned, you know, is your subconscious mind, your unconscious mind, is the all that is. And it's also that place where the fears and addictions and limitations and ancestral and other patterns are present. So when the sun, like a giant spotlight, lights up the attic of your being, it reveals to you the things that are standing in the way from, from the things you want. So we get this beautiful dosing sometimes in the weeks before our birthday or the weeks before the sun crosses over, you know, that placement that you're watching for, where it really helps to define and discern what it is you don't want so that you can use your birthday wishes or if it's another placement besides your sun, your intentions to manifest something different than what has been created. And not to say that we shouldn't accept what is. Absolutely. You know, sometimes in order to be able to shift something, we have to accept something in its, in its version now. But, you know, if you feel out of sorts, if you feel more anxious, if you feel like you're wanting to self-medicate, if you feel, you know, more awkward or stressed or worried in the time before your birthday, sometimes people think, oh, that's just because it's my birthday and I'm reflective and, you know, I'm thinking about how much older I am and thinking about what I haven't done. And maybe all that's true too. But what's really happening is the sun is lighting up this part of your house, of your being, and it's accentuating those types of feelings. So because of all of this Taurus energy, you can actually do something tangible with your thoughts and worries and fears, which is again, writing or speaking them or, you know, going to therapy or doing something where you're doing something tangible to take all of those fears, like processes, spiritual processes or psychological processes that help to clear them out. And then you're ripe and ready for, as these planets move into the first house, you have your rebirth and your regeneration. You still got Venus there for a little while longer, bringing, you know, harmony and peace and making people, making you more persuasive. And in some cases, people more receptive to what you're doing or saying or offering. Okay, so something else that we have to talk about. Oh, by the way, if it is going to be your birthday, make sure you do your birthday wishes. Say them out loud, write them down, and feel them as if they've already come true. Okay, so 
let's talk about the eclipses, right? We're not going to talk about the April eclipse, the April 20th eclipse that is at 29 degrees of Aries, starts in Aries Libra, couple of years cycle that is a very favorable connection for Gemini's. What we've been going through since the end of 2021 through the end of 2023 has been in a difficult angle for Gemini's. It's a Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle, and this has been activating a lot of the same things that I just talked about with this 12th house focus and health and pets and your daily experience. So Taurus and Scorpio eclipse cycle over these years has been shuffling around your stuff versus other people's stuff, your individual autonomy and self-sufficiency and other people's money and your shared resources and binding with other people for synergy and, you know, owning your, some of your, a piece of, for your own. So this is going to continue. We're at the second to last chapter that will end at the end of 2023. Lunar Scorpio eclipse, probably going to have to say goodbye to something. Or multiple things. And those things you say goodbye to, there's a chance that some of them are things you wanted to say goodbye to. Like, ah, good riddance. I've been trying to get rid of this pattern. I've been trying to get rid of this, you know, issue. I've been trying to get rid of this, you know, situation. And the eclipse could eclipse it out for you. Also, as equally as likely, you may have to say goodbye to something you don't want to say goodbye to. Uh, for Gemini's, this could be animals um or and and sometimes the the goodbyes are not goodbyes they're just something dramatic that passes and everything is fine okay so it basically brings drama completion fruition in some cases endings to these fields of experience so animals pets and your day-to-day -day experience so let's say you have a rhythm of something that you're doing every day and you're in a certain groove this eclipse comes brings news brings information that now that gets jostled so if you've been trying to jostle that and have, you know, shake it up a little bit, great. This could bring that for you. If you're not, be prepared to get out of your comfort zone. The energy of Scorpio also rules birth, death, transformation, and rebirth, deep intimate relationships, and relationships that have shared resources, including money and other things that you may share, you know, um, like just other resources that aren't financial, basically, you know, spiritual riches, psychological riches, emotional riches. This is that type of energy. So there may be someone close to you that goes through something that you're profoundly affected by. And this could be a positive thing. You know, maybe your friend wins a million dollars and wow, that is life changing. And that can be bittersweet because maybe the life they had before that they liked and it's an adjustment, you know? Or maybe something else happens. This is how the um, energy of inheritances, winnings, things like that. So there are a lot of ways that this can happen or manifest. If you actually want to see more of those, go to Annie Botticelli on YouTube, search for my eclipses playlist and look and watch um, eclipses in Scorpio. Also for Gemini's, watch eclipses in Virgo because that's the house that it happens in. It will say eclipses in Virgo or sixth house. And between those two videos, you'll get a great series of um, ways that you might see this manifest in your life. Now, to give a little context, last time we had the Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle. Oh, by the way, we're not going to talk a lot about that really favorable um, eclipse for Gemini's, the, um, the Aries eclipse in this video because it happens in April. So make sure to listen to my April Gemini April 2023 report to hear all about that one and it will be affecting now. So even though we're not covering it in depth now, because eclipses tend to have a four to six week mega manifestation period. So four to six weeks before and after this eclipse and the one that was in April is our eclipse season. So we're still manifesting things from the eclipse that was last month in this month as well. Okay. So back to the Taurus Scorpio eclipse, late 2012, through late 2014 is the last time this happened. So think back to the shuffling around of my stuff, your stuff, our stuff, money relationships that happened then. Then think back to late 2002 to early 2000, 2000 gosh, that doesn't, 2002 to early 2005. And 
that it happened then before again. So just kind of think back. Now, not all the things that happened then will happen again. There were unique astrological factors at play at that time that are not at play now. So not everything, you know, is the same. But this theme of the inner world and outer world, of logic versus intuition, of form versus essence, you know, that's the spirit of what's going on for you, um, for Gemini's. And then you know, this me and we stuff and my stuff and our stuff. So look out for radical change, brilliant new beginnings and close and closing of chapters. You know, sometimes there's not a dramatic ending, but it's the closing of a chapter and time to go into a different chapter. You know, it could be also very internal. Sometimes these energies where, you know, we feel that there's amazing change, but to look at your outside world, it's not changed at all. Sometimes your inner world is completely, you know, changed. But very often you will also see changes to the outer realms too. All right, so in this mixture of Mercury things going on, I mean, Taurus things going on, Mercury has been doing retrograde in Taurus. So let's talk about our Mercury retrograde timeline. April 7th, the pre-transit shadow period began. April 21st, Mercury retrograde began. May 14th or 15th, depending on your time zone, is when it goes direct. And then May 30th is when the post-transit shadow period ends. So essentially the whole month is covered in pretty retrograde energy. And as you get like more towards the last week, every day we march towards May 30th, it starts to shift into direct energy. So we want to talk about that shift because you will feel it. And there will be a change in the best way to align with those energies. Okay. So retrogrades tend to bring things inward and backward. So we're going backwards, we're going inward, we're being the earthworm, we're working over and over the soil to make it super fine for present and future growth. So this is the time to deal with what comes up. Be the spider and let the food come to you. It's not a good time to try to conjure things and say, oh, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to do all this stuff and make it happen. It's a time to clear up your piles, clear out space, wrap up loose ends or unfinished old projects and make room for the new. It's time to research, but not necessarily take action. It's time to be confused and not have clarity. One of the things that tends to happen in the retrograde cycle is that that whole thing of planning and strategizing and projecting to the future, it stops sometimes because start things start to happen where we actually can't see further into the future. And this is the universe's beautiful way of helping us keep balance and come back to the present moment because you literally will have all these things happening. Your appliances are breaking down. There's communication breakdowns um, because Mercury rules those things, you know, and you're going to have to deal with them. So this is the time to just kind of hang out and say, okay, what am I supposed to deal with? All right, there it is. And the less you schedule yourself, unnecessarily, the more you'll be able to show up for what comes through. Being in the moment and honoring the flow and not forcing, and also knowing that things that tend to be begun at this time tend to be a little bit shorter term than usual, or tend to get called into question, you know, quite readily. One of the things I love about retrograde is that there's this extra chance for last minute magic. So all of a sudden, someone pops in from your past and says, hey, you want to go on a trip? Or someone invites you to a concert or something. And if you leave yourself some room, you may be able to say yes to that. Now, as we get closer towards the end of the month, we start to shift into the direct energies. I always like to use the the example of somebody being on a beach, okay? In the retrograde, it's good to just hang out on the beach and see what the tide brings in little sea creatures and throw them back, you know, garbage, you throw it out, but you don't want to try to put your, set your boat afloat because the tides are coming in and the boat's going to keep coming back to you. You have to paddle pretty hard. So that's representative of like not trying to put anything out into the world, not trying to force things, not trying to, you know, get really far, really fast because the tides are coming in. It's a good time to be reflective and just deal with what comes up. But as we switch over to the direct times, that's the time to launch. Set your boat afloat because then the tide is going out and it will get carried out more easily. Your message in a bottle, as I always like to say. 
You throw that out in the direct time towards the end of May into June, and it will go further. If you try to set those boats afloat when it's in the retrograde time, they'll just float right back to you. So towards the end of the month into June, launches, big decisions, you'll have more clarity about those agreements. They might be more binding. You might be less likely to miss things in the fine print. Investing moves that you decide on. Sometimes we don't decide when we move, right? Circumstances do. And if that happens in a retrograde, you can't help it. But if you are planning the move, this is a good time for that. Brand new projects, clarity, future planning, pushing, initiating. And it's good to take advantage of that time right at the beginning of June because as June progresses, we start to get into the pre-Venus retrograde shadow period, which is going to last the whole Venus retrograde cycle will last into October. So um, if you want to have more information about how you can align with the natural rhythms by checking out my 2023 calendar, if you go to AnnieBAstrology.com, Annie, the letter B, Astrology.com, and sign up for my exclusive content portal, you get lots of stuff in there. I'm a zealot with my creation, so there's always a lot when you're working with me. But so you can get access to the 2023 calendar so that you know how to align your efforts with when the tides are coming in and out for the rest of the year. But I'll give you this tidbit here so you know for May and June, you know, you've got a window there opening up, but it's better to wait to see the energy that manifests throughout May because a lot of information will also be coming in from the eclipses that, you know, might dictate how you make your choices. And if you try to make those choices prematurely, you know, like through the first half, three quarters of the month, you know, information might come in that changes things uh, drastically. And so waiting for those clearer skies will be easier for you. Mention here of something very exciting. This is going to be going on for 20 years, so we'll have plenty of time to talk about this. But Pluto just got into fellow air sign. So that means you're going to have 20 years of the energy of Pluto trine. Trine is the most favorable aspect in all of astrology. And, you know, you've just gone through since 2008 of it being in a tough angle for you. So this could really be something supportive and can also um, boost again, your writing, your speaking, your teaching, your learning, your international travel and business, um, and just bring you great transformation on every level. All right, so if you love how I teach astrology and you want to learn, go to loomlife.com, L-U-M-E, life.com. See my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course. If you think I put a lot into my free offerings, you should see what I put into my paid offerings. So if you want to go from either ground zero to earning money as an astrologer, or if you've been studying for a long time and you can't seem to pull it together to get your confidence to give a kick-ass reading every time, that is what I help you do. So you can go there and you'll also find some free classes like a free class on abundance and creating money um, and resources. And you'll also see some free health classes there. I have some blog sites. You can see those in the notes underneath the video or the uh, podcast. And I have them here if you're looking at this visually. You can go to AnnieBAstrology.com for my exclusive content portal. And you can check out my books, which I have listed here and are also in the notes underneath. I haven't been on camera much um, anymore, but here's a nice self-drawing of me. <laughs> and here's a picture of me saying, have a wonderful month. See you next month. Bye.